Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. And as we begin, just let me say thank you. Thank you for what you do. I know that as you're going through the study process, as you're preparing for the exam, uh, likely you are listening to this either in the car, you're on a run, uh, doing something where you are trying to study and use what I like to call your found time in order to study, meaning time that you would not be particularly sitting at the desk in the library, locked in your room doing you know, any type of studies with the, just pouring over the books. So you have taken a step to make yourself excellent as not only a test taker, but also as a clinician. And so thank you for what you do. I know that it will bless your life and the lives of your patients and your family for, for years and even generations to come. So I know that it's a noble thing you're doing and thank you for what you do. As we begin today, I do have a practice question related to the non-systems. So as you recall on the exam day, you can expect a good handful of questions on the non-systems. Uh, today's session is all about, or today's episode, I should say, is about the therapeutic modalities. So you can expect somewhere between four and six items related to this on 2024 and beyond outline. So on this content outline, it goes through each, uh, really the purpose of this podcast is to go through each section of the FSVPT content outline to help you know what to study, what type of content is likely to show up, plus to give you a ton, a ton, a ton of practice questions. Because let's be honest, the most evidence-based way to study for and prepare for any standardized exam is to spend time with the practice questions. But before we get to the question, just a quick reminder that we are doing a free one-day event in Chicago on November 18th. So if you're looking for an on-campus, an on-in-person, on-site way to study, great way, a great place and a great way to jumpstart your studies. So that's in Chicago on November 18th. The registration is totally free. All you have to do is go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast where you'll be able to easily register. Now, the registration spots are extremely limited, so you'll want to make sure to register for that as quickly as possible. This is done by one of our corporate sponsors, Athletico and Pivot. Uh, they're a regional PT chain, and they, uh, anyway, they, they, they tend to treat their PTs quite well. They've been working with us for quite some time, helping students get ready and pass the NPTE. So they're sponsoring this event, which means that the event is totally free to you. Plus, it comes with free parking, free meals, and they'll even throw in some gas money to help you get there. You just have to register and and make it to Chicago in on November 18th. That's a Saturday, so you can participate with me on site. We'll be able to go through a ton of content. I think you'll really enjoy it. So again, the best way to sign up for that is to go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you'll be able to easily find the registration link. And again, registration, registration slots are extremely limited. So you'll want to register ASAP if you want to go to that on November 18th, Saturday in Chicago. All right, so today, as I mentioned, this is the therapeutic modalities. We'll be going through a question related to therapeutic modalities. This is a part of the broader non-systems portion of the exam. So on test day, you can expect a good, a good number of questions related to the non-systems, but it's not as large as, say, the main three, cardio, muscular, and neuro. You can expect somewhere around, oh, what, five to six questions related to equipment devices technology, four to six questions on therapeutic modalities, five to seven questions on safety and protection, four to five on professional responsibilities, and around three to five on research and evidence-based practice. So in a sense, there are five categories, each with about five questions in the non-system. So a grand total of about 25 questions or so on test day related to the non-systems. Now, the, the difficult thing about the non-systems is that it covers such a wide variety of content. I uh, consider the research and evidence-based practice. They're asking somewhere between three and five questions on that, but it covers a very large scope of material. The therapeutic modalities, I mean, just if you pick up any therapeutic modalities book, you'll see that there are a number of modalities. There's lots to know, but they'll only test you on four to six questions related to it. So again, we're talking about applications, parameters, uh, indications, contraindications, all of that related to the therapeutic modalities. And we'll be talking about that in our question today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question. When applying electrical stimulation for wound healing of an infected wound, which of the following sets of applications and parameters would be most appropriate? So we've got when applying electrical stimulation for wound healing of an infected wound, which of the following sets of applications and parameters would be most appropriate? One, positive polarity on wound, 
Ampl amplitude set to elicit comfortable tingling, applied 15 minutes daily. Two, positive polarity on wound, amplitude set to elicit muscular contraction, applied 15 minutes daily. Three, negative polarity on wound, amplitude set to elicit muscular contraction, applied 45 minutes daily. And finally, four, negative polarity on wound, amplitude set to elicit comfortable tingling, applied 45 minutes daily. So this is one of your classic mix and match style questions. So again, the question is saying when applying e-stim for wound healing of an infected wound, which of the following sets of applications and parameters would be most appropriate? And then the mix and match is we've got positive or negative polarity, amplitude set to elicit comfortable tingling or muscular contraction, and application for 15 minutes or 45 minutes. So you can see a mix and match among all of those parameters. So the correct answer is the negative polarity on the wound. Uh, one way I remember this is that a little bit like you remember iontophoresis, that if uh, you remember that the anode, or let's see, no, what is it? The cathode is the negative pole because cats are so negative. I said the, the, the different medications for iontophoresis, they all, they're all very negative when you talk about iodine, the salicylates, acetic acid, de dexamethasone, they're all negative. So somewhat related, you have to follow my brain, my track here as we get to high volt pulsed current or e-stim for wound healing on, a, on an infected wound, you have to apply the negative polarity directly on the wound. So that's the primary parameter you've got to identify is that for an inflamed or infected wound, you've got to apply the negative polarity directly on the wound. Now, when it comes to high volt pulse current, you can place the electrodes either directly on or in the wound, I should say, or you could place them immediately surrounding the wound. I'll tell you that generally speaking, you'll get a better, more direct application if it's in the wound, but sometimes that's just not feasible depending on the size and shape and placement of the wound. But that being said, for a negative or sorry, for an infected wound, you'll want to use the negative polarity. So a high volt pulsed current, this is a monophasic type of pulse, meaning that it is either positive or negative. So in this case, we have the negative polarity directly on the wound. The amplitude should be set to elicit a comfortable tingling. So not a muscular contraction, rather it should be a comfortable tingling sensation. So again, very comfortable for the patient. And then as far as the time or the application time, it should be somewhere between 45 and 60 minutes three to seven days per week. So it's typically left in place. Think about this, a long duration. And the purpose of that is as you're trying to introduce a polarity to the wound, you'll find that as you're trying to not only attract neutrophils, but improve circulation in the area, you'll find that the more prolonged applications will result in the better results. So therefore the, the primary application is 45 to 60 minutes daily for three to seven days per week meaning pretty much an hour a day keeps the wound away. <laughs> uh, negative polarity directly on the wound. Uh, amplitude is set to elicit a comfortable tingling and it's applied 45 minutes daily for up to seven days per week. So it is, like I say, the high volt pulsed current. It is a monophasic type current, meaning that it is either positive or negative. It's not, not a biphasic or an alternating type current, nor is it truly direct current because direct current, you just turn it on and it continues to deliver like an iontophoresis. In this case, it is a pulsed current. So HVPC, high volt pulsed current. You'd want the negative polarity placed directly on the wound and the amplitude is set to a comfortable tingling sensation. So again, this is one of the types of questions you could expect on test day. Pretty easy to write when you do the mix and match style questions where you're trying to say, okay, which applications parameters would be most appropriate? In this case, high volt pulse current, the negative polarity directly on the wound to a comfortable tingling sensation applied 45 minutes daily up to seven days per week. So there you go. That's an example of a modalities type question related to the non-systems on test day. As you're get, getting ready for test day, be sure to check out all the other episodes we have available. Plus, we have ongoing courses. You can always sign up for any of our courses that we've got going on. Uh, typically, at any point during the year, we've got something going on. We run a crash course immediately before every test day. We run what we call our premium course two months before every test day. And then three months before every test day, we run the VIPT class. So the VIPT course, this is where we go through. It's extremely robust. We go through, we have time to go through every system on the exam. We go through a number of practice questions. Plus you get access to our exam simulator. You get complimentary access to all of our video library, the crash course, you get everything as a part of the VIPT class. So 
All right, with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion today. Thank you so much again for joining me and for what you do. I'll catch you all in the next episode. If you haven't yet, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, a share, uh, however it is that you interact with this podcast as we try to get the word out. Uh, Will Crane fist pumps all around, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Thanks. 